Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now, I'm kind of, um, I'm talking, this is my dream that I had called, um, the three days of darkness. Now I uploaded the video to my uh, other channel and um, I'm going to try to do a detailed version of it because I did rush through it because it was early in the morning and I had to go to work. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is later on in the day. I'm, I'm home and uh, I'm going to try to remember to the best of my ability as the Lord leads this dream. Now, the beginning of the dream, I was sitting in an office desk, um, in a chair, facing an office desk. The office desk was in front of me is not the one that I, I'm sitting in front of right now. It was the old one. Um, it had, um, like, I, yeah, I had a double shelf. Anyway, it was, I was sitting at it, and... I kind of was kind of remind me of, of seeing my old computer and I had looked over at the window now outside the window which is a huge humongous window by the way um I didn't there was no tree branches in front of the window there was just sky and the trees there was no buildings out, outside or anything so it doesn't look like it does in reality um, but there was the trees that were in the, you know, between me and the other property. They were there and they could see there was a cloudy sky and you could see like this darkness coming. Um, and you knew it was the darkness that, um, that was from the three days of darkness. That's what I knew instantly in my spirit. I could see it coming and it was coming. It, it, and and I, the sky was like clouds, like gray clouds in the sky, and I saw the darkness come. And I knew it was coming, like I could see in the distance behind the trees. So I knew it was coming, and um, and so what I did was I jumped um, out of my seat. I hit the power button on my computer on the computer I had there. The odd fact it was the computer I use nowadays, but it was in that desk, which in reality my computer could not fit in that desk. Um, it's one of the one of those type of models. Anyway, so I slammed the door shut, knowing that I there was no way to cover up that giant window. And um, why? Uh, why I'll continue why. Um, you have to, windows have to be covered because you don't want to look out into the darkness because during that during the darkness it will be the alien invasion going on such a which that's why I have to call it the alien invasion the invasion of demons fallen angels and um, the enemy dirtbag so you don't want to look at it because when you're looking at it and looking for them um, you're giving them oh, an open door to come in to come in. And so when you look out there, you give them an open door to come in, and they're going to come right into your home, and you're going to be attacked. It's not going to be good. And so I shut the door and locked it. So I locked the office door. And um, I had went into uh, the master bedroom, as it's like to be called, or the main bedroom, to be politically correct nowadays. That bedroom does not look like it does in reality. Um, there was a bed in there and a few pieces of furniture, but it was very sparse and empty. Um, I went over and made sure all the Venetian blinds were pulled down on all four of the windows. The reality that that bedroom does not have four windows. But in the, in the dream, it had four windows. And I pulled down the blinds on all the windows, and I put... I put tails, or tails and blankets... I went to the linen closet in the hallway, grabbed tails, and, and there's blankets in that linen closet as well. And um, in reality, they, they, we don't keep blankets in the linen closet, but anyway. Um, I remember grabbing blue blankets and these blue tails. Remember, there were blue ones. I remember the color. And I put them on the, you know, the rails for, for the uh, curtain rod. I hung it over there and hung it over. And while I was doing this, I was rushing. I was not doing it slow. I was fast. I went from one window to the second window to the third window. And while I was in the fourth window, I could feel the darkness. 
it's not a darkness like if you turn off all your lights in your home, that type of darkness. This darkness has a feeling to it. It's like it's alive. And it's very, it's very evil. It's not a good feeling. It's very, very evil feeling. And so I closed, I had the Venetian blonde, and I knew I could feel the, like, the darkness going, trying to go through the, through the Venetian blinds as it was coming. And I did not want to look at it at all. I want nothing to do with it. And I had gotten the curtain raw, gotten the tails and everything, covered it all up. So that all the windows were completely sealed. Then I raced to the bathroom, and there's only one bed window in the bathroom, and I could sense that the darkness was behind there, behind the Venetian blind. So the Venetian blind was halfway down, and I could sense it was behind it, and it was trying to get through, that the darkness was already here. And so I did not look at the window to the very best of my ability, and pulled the shades down, well, try not to look at it, and then I covered the um, the window with tails, blankets, whatever. I started rushing really, really fast. Well, not really, not really looking physically at the window. So once it was covered, then I looked and it looked because it was completely covered. I couldn't see outside. Then I had went downstairs, and I was going to cover up all the windows downstairs. I never covered up all the windows downstairs, by the way. So when I got downstairs, I did not look at the walls because the walls had windows that were fully open that you could see outside. Um, the dining room looks like it does in reality right now. And um, when I got into the living room, the living room did not look like it does today. It looked like it did probably 20 years ago when I was a kid because you had a suede couch, which does not exist anymore, um, against the wall, and then there was another couch against the other wall that, that the, both those couches don't exist anymore. <laughs> anyway, and that was basically, there was just two couches, and um, I can't remember any other furniture in there. It was very, kind of very, very, very sparsely furnished, let's just say that much. And sitting on the suede couch, so when you go in the dining room, you walk through, there's a wall that's um, between the uh, living room and the dining room. That wall, there was a couch on it, and sitting on it, not to name names, um, were uh, two people, which um, I know for, for a fact, 100%, they've taken them. And these two people um, aren't, aren't good people. They've taken the mark of the beast, and they don't believe in God anyway. But um, they were demonic. These weren't the them, though. They were not physically those people. They were demons. And um, they look like they did from my memory from back when I was, like, very, very little. Um, one had uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, and the other one had dark hair. And they had a, a little boy with them um, who was about, like, three, four years old, I would say, at the max. When, in reality, this, this little boy is 24 years old and living in Germany, by the way. So anyway, he, the little boy was tottering on the ground. They were there and they could feel pure hatred coming from them. Pure, pure, pure hatred. They, they, and I, I rebuked them in Jesus' name and told them to get out. And they told me that I hated them and that I was crazy and everything else. But these were demons. <laughs> I was arguing, I was rebuking demons and trying to kick them out. But I couldn't kick him out because I wasn't the one who legally gave him space in the house, <laughs> in the building. Another person, not to name names, was was living in the house, who legally had opened the door to the front door and let them in. And while I was right when I was about to rebuke them, I looked over at a this uh, person who I thought you know was my my friend. One of these people I'm friends with, I talk on the phone. Uh, once in a while, not often, I will admit, probably mostly text in reality, and not even that often, because me and them aren't on the same wavelength, we're both Christians, but um, they're, you know, they're churchy type, that believes our pastor completely. Anyway, I gotta pause again. I'm back on, um, 
so and I knew 100% that person who just came through the open front doors was 100% a demon. They weren't, none of these were human beings. They were all demons. They were transformed into these people, into these images of these people. But they were 100% demons. Now, I had an instant knowing in my spirit that the other person living in the house, I'm not going to name names, was living in this house with me, heard them. When the darkness came and just covered everything, they heard this. Knocking at the door. Them. And they, and they, and he asked, that person uh, asked who they were, and they opened the door, let the demons in, and I couldn't rebuke them and kick them out of the house, out of the building. Because that, that person opened the door. And the door was open. I did. I saw the wooden door, but I did not look at the screen doors because I knew the darkness was back there. And because um, there's there's uh, three doors to the front door of this house that I was in, and so I did not want to look there. I looked at the wooden door that was, you know, right in front of me. I looked at her, but I did not look at the darkness or anything else. And I, God told me go upstairs. I left that room, ran up the stairs, and once I got upstairs, boom, right behind me, I um, I felt this knowing to look behind me, and there was right behind me was a silver door. It was a silvery gray color, and it was one of, like a powerful, three thick metal door, it's like solid metal. Just boom, it was there. Um, right the, at the top of the steps. So you couldn't get down the stairs, and people from down the stairs couldn't come up the stairs. And it said on the top of it, Yahweh, which was Y W, um, you know how you spell Yahweh. It was spelled Y H W Y H W H, and it was written in big capital letters at the top of the door. Um, and <clears throat> that's what was written there. I had a knowing in my spirit that I could open that door to get down the stairs if I wanted to. But I did not want to because the only thing down there was the other family member who opened the door, who wasn't closing the windows, and um, let all the all those dirt bags in. in. So I, I was upstairs and there was a woman upstairs with me. This woman was petite. She wasn't very tall. I don't know if I stated that in the first time around, because I was trying to be real quick. Um, she had black curly hair. It was around her ears. That was how long it was. She was very thin. She was very thin. I would say mid-40s at the oldest of her age. Um, I would say of Middle Eastern descent. From from way she looked, she looked Middle Eastern. She was very friendly, very nice. I had to explain to her that we're in the middle of the three days of darkness. I had to teach her. Um, she didn't know what was going on. She had no idea what was going on, but she did believe in God. She loved um, Christ, and I didn't know in my spirit she was a baby Christian. That she was a baby Christian. Um, she had. Probably came to Lord Jesus Christ not that long ago. She didn't know very knew very much or very little, um, and I had to minister to her. While we were in that um, that main bedroom, we heard voices coming out of one, one of the windows. So one of the windows facing to the right of me, I heard voices, um, like like it was very powerful voice. Like a, like a male voice, very powerful, and he was doing a car salesman thing, trying to sell some type of car. I was trying not to listen to it, trying to block it. Um, I was pleading Lord Jesus' blood over my ears and my eye gates. Well, she heard another, saw another demon that I didn't hear that was trying to tell her, you know, to buy something or something. And so she went into her little Tweety purse. She had one of these tiny little old fashioned purses that someone used like back in like in the 50s or something 
and she had pulled out her wallet and took out like I think a 20 um and had handed it to me and told me to go outside because she couldn't because she couldn't open that door she knew she couldn't open the door um go outside go buy this item from this this person that was outside and I told her I am not going outside we're in the middle of the three days of darkness and I told her the truth and stuffed the 20 or whatever dollar bill, I think it was 20, um, and back into her, into her wallet, sipped up her wallet, put it back in her purse. And, um, yeah, I do remember, um, I also ran back into my bedroom, but did not look up or anything kind of blindfolded with myself, grabbed my Bible and ran out and shut my door because I knew I couldn't. I couldn't use my bedroom for the sheer fact the windows were open and God had allowed me to go in there because he wanted me to grab my Bible. He didn't have me grab the rest of my books because I have apocrypha books and everything else. He had me grab the, my big King James version of the Holy Bible. I took that and left the bedroom, shut the door and never went back in there um, because the windows are open and there was, it was too late at this point to try to close because you had to manually close the window because they were open literally and then cover them up and there was no time left at this point so just shut the door shut the door and just stay away from it and me and that woman we were our heads down on the ground on the floor was a wooden floor um looking at this bible reading and praying and there was while we were doing that there was booming music outside the house extremely loud. I remember one of the songs was Katy Perry. Um, it was that one Katy Perry song. Um, what was that one Katy Perry song? I don't even listen to her anymore, but, um, because I, mean, I don't like her music anymore, but, um, it was one of her Katy Perry songs. And, uh, there was playing that, and then there was playing, like, all kinds of other pop music. I think Lady Gaga was played. And it was very, very loud, and you could hear demons singing to this music, literally singing to it. And I just kept rebuking him and rebuking him and rebuking him. And that's all I could do, and keep pleading Lord his blood on my eye gates and my ear gates, because I did not want to hear this. And, uh, because they were trying to distract us. Then, um, around after that, I heard bang, 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 bang on that metal door. And um, it was my relative who was downstairs, the one who opened the front door, was telling me, aren't you going to take care of your chickens? Aren't you going to take care of your chickens? And I was like, God. I said to him, God will take care of my chickens. I am not going outside. And I had a knowing my spirit. Then he went down the stairs and went outside and to take care of those chickens. He went outside in the three days of darkness. You do not go outside in the three days of darkness. Um, but he went out there. And uh, and also had a knowing that if you looked at the outside the windows, that you would be allowing the demons to enter into the home. And by doing so, you'd be attacked. And I knew instantly that you'd be attacked physically um, and internally, they, they would stab, you would feel like you're being stabbed with knives all over yourself. That's what I was getting the knowing of. And it wasn't good. It was not good. And, uh, you do not want to open your door to whoever's knocking on the door. Even if it sounds like your best friend banging on the door, don't open the door. And <clears throat> this was what I was getting in the dream. And it was not, it wasn't, it wasn't going, it wasn't going good, um, for that, that relative downstairs. Later on, I heard, uh, that relative having humongous screaming matches with those demons downstairs. It, it was, it was just beyond horrible. Like, they were all screaming, cursing, and saying all kinds of bad words, vulgarity, everything between that relative and the, all those demons down there, especially uh, the one demon that was disguised as that blonde-haired girl. Um, ugh, it was bad. It was really, really bad. Um, I just stayed hunkered down and uh, stayed with the Bible and prayer and encouraged that woman to do the same. And she did the same. 
um, both of us were uh, reading the Bible together and praying together. And that was basically that. I also had a knowing that it's like something might hit, like something's going to come on May 25th, like a meteor or something. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So maybe a meteorite will hit on May 25th. Maybe not. I don't know. That, that's what I was getting in the dream, but we'll see what happens. I don't know when the three days of darkness is going to start either. Uh, it could happen tomorrow for all I know. I have no idea. Only God knows. And the same thing with the Egyptians back when the first three days of darkness happened. Back in Moses' time, only nobody knew. <laughs> I think Moses knew because Moses stated it was going to happen. God let him know to warn the warn the Israelites. But when it came to the Egyptians, they didn't know when it was going to happen. You know what I mean? They didn't know when it was going to happen for the unknowing Egyptians. But I think, yeah, Moses did know, and he warned the Israelites to prepare for it with the, for, you know, with the pastor for and everything. So wash your, your home and your house and your windows and everything in Lord Jesus' blood to protect your home and cover up your windows and don't go outside. And no matter what anyone's saying to you, um, don't do it. And don't look outside because you'll be bringing the enemy into your home. And once you do that, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Because I had a knowing in my spirit that once you did that, you'll be being stabbed and attacked and, and brutally abused for the whole three days of darkness. Once you peeked out and looked outside into the darkness, even once. So don't do it. And uh, I also had a knowing my spirit, like those people who took in um, the Mark of the Beast, that needle in the arm thing, you know, that lead pen thing I'm up. Um, they're going to turn into zombies and they're they're going to go, go. So beware. I In that dream, I was praying also for, for, um, for my... Um, for a friend of mine named Steve, I was praying for him. Um, I was worried for him because he was, you know, all by himself and I didn't know what was becoming of him. I knew something bad was going to happen to that relative that was living downstairs who went outside in the darkness. Um, I knew that if you can go outside, if you go outside in the darkness, there's a high chance you might end up being, you know, being severe, very severely attacked or an even worse demon possessed. Um, it's not going to be a good idea. I don't know um, if you are in the car and you see the darkness comes, uh, what God's going to do for you. Maybe God will send you to go into a house or in a store or something and hunker down there. It's between you and the Lord. Take this up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for guidance, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I wasn't planning or expecting this dream. Um, the night before, I was really having a conversation uh, uh, with God and but I wasn't expecting this, so. But yeah. And for all the, this is for a majority of, of the of the body of Christ is going to go through the three days of darkness. Only the first fruits, which are like the Enochs and the Elijahs, are going to be taken out. And the only and they're they're going to be taken out of time, trained and come back here to help the multitude come come to Christ or get the heart healing deliverance they need, help them understand, like people who don't understand that the um that you know <clears throat> that that once saved only saved is is not true, that you can lose your salvation. Um things that have to do with salvation issues, understand Christ, who he is, teach those that are baby in Christ, you know, how to you know to help strengthen them and kind of get better. Because the uh, the big the rapture will come at towards the end, which is for the multitude. I really wanted to believe that everyone was taken or in the beginning, but that is not what God has led me to. Um, 
to understand. Because I truly did believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. That is only for the first fruits. But it's not really a pre-trib. It's kind of like a mid-trib for them. Because we're already in the tribulation. Because the mark of the beast has been around for all these years now. And everything is falling apart. It's little by little bit. But the restrainer is the first fruits. But it's between you and the Lord if you believe that. And it talks about the first fruits in um, the book of Revelation. I think it's chapter 13, chapter 14. Don't quote me on it. Um, let me look. I have time. Get my Bible right here. Do, 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 do. Revelation's the last chapter. No, for Second John. Well, that was the nope. Revelation thirteen. No, it's Revelation fourteen. The Lamb and the hundred and forty-four thousand. Now, it's between you and the Lord if you believe this. But God, this is what God has taught me that there are that there are two hundred and eighty-eight thousand the first fruits, and. Now, you're going to be wondering how I got that number. First off, there was 288,000 in David's army, including 288,000. Also, another was also in David's um, musical choir that he had. Now, there is the first group of 144,000 that are represent Jesus fully God. They're like the Enochs of the world. They are extremely close to Jesus. They completely denied themselves and took up their cross. They gave up everything in this world for Jesus. And they're going to be transfigured. So when Jesus comes for them, they're going to go up, get transfigured into perfect glorified bodies, the bodies that Adam and Eve used to have before they partake in the in the, in the, in the sin of, of, of the knowledge of good and evil from that, from that tree. So they're going to come back and they're going to help with the harvest to get the multitude ready so they can go out of time with, with Christ. And then there's the second one, second group of 144,000, which represents Jesus being fully man. They're going to be transformed into perfect glorified bodies. And they're going to be walking the earth like boots on the ground, helping people come to Christ. And the two of them are going to be backing each other up together. Um, they're going to be working together. They're going to be going out and helping the harvest. And it's not just going to be those two groups. God has also revealed to me that there are still people from the Bible. God, Jesus said there will be people. It says in his word, I just can't remember which verse it is, that there will be people that he was talking to that aren't going to taste death until, um, until the, until the uh, second, second return. Um, if I could just find where that verse is. So, but yeah. So, and what I'm getting is, is that John the Revelator, along with Lazarus, is still alive. And they're still alive even after 2,000 years. And that, and that what I'm getting from the Lord is that they probably don't look like they 2,000 years at all. They probably look like they did back then, but they're still walking this earth somewhere. And that them are going to be here helping with the multitude, along with God's angels. And God's also going to be bringing members from, from the Old Testament, like Elijah, Moses, Abraham, all these people from the Old Testament and from the New Testament, like Luke, Mark, they're all going to come back. They're not going to be in bodies we recognize because they haven't, because, you know, it's, you know, not the end yet. So they haven't gotten like full bodies or something from what I've gotten from the Lord. It's I'm waiting for the Lord to clarify more about that, but they're going to be coming to help with the multitude and um, to help them get right, get right with God. Well, the only people that can, will not be able to be saved are those who've taken the mark of the beast because they're in God no longer recognized by God.
because their DNA has been edited, has been changed. Yahweh's signature has been removed from their DNA. And it does not say Yahweh anymore, and God will not recognize them as his own creation. God has has proven that to me over and over again through prayer and supplication. That they're no longer salvageable. It's between you and the Lord, and if you believe that or not. Um, I am just a voice on the other end of a speaker. <laughs> I am just God's dust. No one's above me, no one's beneath me. I am just God's dust. So... It's going to be amazing when all this goes goes on. It's going to be truly, truly amazing. And uh, Jesus is coming. Now, to skip death, you have to go through the sanctification process. Now, when you accept Lord Jesus Christ as your sa Savior, you're sanctified to, in the by the blood of the Lamb to death. So if you die and you you die, you go straight to heaven. But to be sanctified to that level where you can go outside of time, you need heart healing and deliverance. You need to get rid of all your family inherited curses and rebuke them all. And you need to create in you a clean heart, a completely new clean clean heart. So you have to get rid of all the unforgiveness all of it and give it all to Jesus and forgive these people. And what I mean heart healing deliverance is like, here's an example. You have this guy named Martin. He's 38 years old. Throughout his, his life, he, his, his father was an alcoholic. He was beaten and abused when he was a child. He was put into foster care because his parents abandoned him because he got into drugs. He was abused in the foster care system. Bad, bad, bad things happened to him throughout those years. They, left, they caused his heart to shatter and fragment. God allows our hearts to shatter and fragment and form fragments. So we can continue going. But those fragments need to be healed and remolded back into the heart. And when, they, when you do that, when you go to Jesus and you, and you ask him, create in me a clean heart, show me what broken parts of your heart you want me to work on, he starts bringing back old memories and you start working with it with Jesus and letting it go and your heart gets molded into the image of God. It is so amazing. It is so, so amazing. And you have let's go of all those, the pain and the suffering, which is so amazing. It is so very amazing. Like, the, like Martin's abuse when he was when he was three years old and how his father beat him up and locked him in a closet for 12 hours. He's sitting there having a conversation with Jesus. And Jesus like uh, reveals that to him. Old memory just brings it right back up. And and Martin is crying and he, he and he lets it all go and he has discusses all Jesus and just lets it go. And Jesus heals his heart, and it is so amazing. And if you keep working on that, and take up your cross and deny yourself, and not chase after the things of this world, and the things of the, of the beast system, which are the system of this world, now we all have to hold down jobs and make money, but um, to pay our bills and support our families, but... <clears throat> We put Jesus first. We put Jesus first. And like we don't go out to the movie theaters and watch his worldly movies. We don't go go to the to the club, to the bar, to you know, we don't go out and listen to worldly music, like sitting there listening to um I don't know K pop. <laughs> Just thinking of something, and going out there and listening to that, or 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 go cosplaying, or or do these music for our videos of ourselves in these tight skinny outfits, wearing wigs. You don't want to do any of those things. You know what I mean? And you want to continue to repent every constantly. Every time you feel like you sinned, you repent. Now, this is the, the t these are the type of people that are in the first fruits. They repent constantly for their sins so they can stand blame blameless before the Lord. 
they constantly deny themselves. They take up their cross and deny themselves. They don't chase after worldly possessions and, and collect things. They're not chasing after greed or, or the things of this world. They deny themselves completely. They give their whole entire mind, body, and soul to Christ. Which is so amazing. It is so amazing. Abba Father it is so amazing. And I'm very, very thankful for this dream. I'm sorry the video is getting a little bit long here. That's already 30 minutes. Um, I was also, um, t um, got a, also got a, got a word from the Lord that I need to cut back on how many videos I watch per day and spend more time, um, in worship and prayer instead of watching videos. Um, I've been trying, been trying to cut back and, uh, that's what the Lord wants me to do. So. I'm sorry to the people I'm subscribed to that I'm not going to be watching their videos as much as I used to. Um, I kind of sometimes feel guilty that I don't watch as many videos as I should in a day because I feel like I should catch up with uh, certain people, um, especially uh, um, my brother rescued. I try to keep up with his videos, but um, that the Lord wants me to focus on him and he wants to do the same with all of us. Um, he wants us all to focus on him, not on the things of this world and um, where we spend most of our time should be on Jesus and praying unceasingly because this world's about to um, fly the coop and we should just, you know, trust in Jesus. Our eternal home's in heaven. I look forward to it. <laughs> I just want to add that I forgot to add this when I retold my dream. So I'm adding this to the end of the dream video that I had gotten knowing my spirit that like it helped it like happened. Like the three days of darkness started like around 12 noon in the middle of the day. So I said that in my first recording that, um, that I did and I uploaded to one of my backup channels, but, um, yeah. Well, thank you for listening, and I'll be back as the Lord leads. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Did you hear me? Yeshua Yamahasha is coming. Yeshua Yamahasha is coming. Yeshua Yamahasha is coming. Yeshua Yamahasha is coming. Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.